Yeah, quickly, uh, it's been said and it's certainly correct that matching is the most important function of um, online platforms, but it's not the only one, uh, in the sense that you've got, I think, two types of platforms, those that are, you know, just doing matching, and those that are also actively participating on the platform, on, on a downstream market, basically, and as you may know, uh, Amazon is being investigated by the European Commission, as well as by some national competition authorities on the ground that Amazon, of course, is uh, an e-commerce platform, but at the same time, it's competing with third-party retailers. Um, and that is seen by some as an issue because, in particular, uh, Amazon has the data of uh, third-party retailers competing on its platform. So I think that um, usually the antitrust issues will kick in when the platform goes beyond simple matching to become an actor on the platform, competing with others, right? And um, I, I see going forward that the two critical issues that will be dealt with, at least in the European Union, are so-called self-preferencing, which was, you know, uh, the, the theory in the Google Shopping case, but also self-leading, which is the one in Amazon. Now, on, on mergers, um, it's true that the mergers, I mean, to have basically a turnover threshold in industries where uh, newcomers, startups have no turnover is a bit of a problem. So uh, my good feeling is that something will, will have to be done about it. I mean, I think one approach, I think, which is mentioned in the Furman report is basically to designate a certain number of companies as having some sort of you know, uh, special status because of their market power and then systematically look at the acquisitions they make. It's definitely one possibility. In Germany, in Austria, they have moved away from a turnover threshold uh, approach to more of a value-based one, which is, I think, quite interesting. So I think some changes will, will be made there. Um, I think, again, to talk about um, um, the fact that that slowness is, is a problem um, when it comes to antitrust investigations, I mean, quite frankly, I think that perhaps one of the differences we've seen with uh, the digital economy is that the market, the, the model, that many companies have followed is to move fast and break things. And to be honest, I think that even those that have been condemned would still do it again. Look, you know, you just go fast, you break things, the market tips, and then you get a fine. It's an excellent deal, right? Um, and um, quite frankly, many CEOs still, you know, will, will just go for it. Especially if there's no restorative element in the remedies. So if you end up with a billion fine and a season desist, what a good deal. Um, it's only when the remedies will seek to restore competition that has been harmed by anti-competitive conduct that I think that CEOs will have to think twice about moving fast and breaking things. Um, on the use of presumptions, I think there, um, the thinking in several places is shifting. I think traditionally there was a consensus that over-enforcement was more damaging than under-enforcement. Now, if you look at all these reports, the one from the ACCC, the Commission one, European Commission one, the UK one, the Furman report, the Stigler report, uh, the German report, because there's also a German report, all of them consider that under-enforcement may be more problematic than over-enforcement. So I think the, the sort of you know, decision theory framework is, is really uh, going down the tube. Um, um, if you look at these reports, right, I mean, you know, not everyone agrees with them, but you can see that things are shifting at the moment. So let me stop here.